Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, Ludatics. My name is D-Town, and I'm here on behalf of Interlude TCG Supplies, where you can find all of your different waifu TCG needs. Binders, deck boxes, card sleeves, we got them all. Go check us out and get 5% off with the code above. Today, we're going to be looking at what I've named Perdita Control. Now, we've all seen the Ruby Sapphire Control decks. We all know and hate, and maybe some of us love, the amethyst ruby control decks well today we're going to be playing a ruby amber control deck and it is going to be highlighting perdita the card is absolutely gas it is such a fun deck uh, that could recover from things like be prepared pretty well we've got lots of rushers to take care of those annoying locations and it has a ton of card draw that it can offer but this deck is kind of control but it plays like a combo deck so you really have to be patient um the cards that you're looking for in your deck when you're drawing it's very particular and you just kind of have to know your matchups in order for this deck to be really well suited for you as far as the difficulty level of this deck i honestly i'd put it at like a four out of five um again just when you when you're dealing with combos it's all about the playing the correct cards at the right time so that you can see the utmost uh, return on the deck. So let's get into it here. 60 card deck, we include three copies of Minnie Mouse. This is just our uh, one cost card that helps fuel the Rockstar package. It's also great uh, with Teeth and Ambitions and uh, it can take a little bit of a beating in case we need to draw cards with Rapunzel. We can also summon it with Perdita if we absolutely need to. However, it won't really come in, uh, and you won't really see that happening too much. So, uh, but good car card overall, we put it at three. You also notice the numbers in here. Uh, we are running a lot of three ofs, and that's just because those cards, like although they're nice to see, we don't really need to see them. Something we do want to see in this deck and usually what you'll want to try and mulligan for early on is Mother Gothel. It's a great two cost card. It procs our rock star. It's extremely nice to resummon with Perdita. And it is one of the best cards you can hope for turn six if you have this combo of her and Rapunzel in hand. Um, just a all around good card. It has a three strength, which means it gets rid of most of the early game and pu slowly pushing into the mid game worth of threats. Uh, yeah, just a good card overall. Another great card in this deck is Stitch Little Rocket. So although he comes in uninkable at a two cost, his three attack power gets rid of a ton of threats. And the fact that it has Brush makes this card absolutely wonderful. Now, uh, a lot of people may have missed this, but this is a Stitch card, which means that you can shift onto it with Rockstar Stitch if you absolutely need to. And as we mentioned earlier, we can recover it with Perdita. For those of you who don't know, Perdita can pull any one or two cost card from your discard pile and summon it whenever she's played and whenever she quests. So this is great because you could play this, grab a rush character out of your discard, slam it into something, and now you've just gotten you know a plus one value off of the Perdita. Teeth and Ambitions is a nice card to help us round out some of our awkward numbers. Let's say that we crash uh, Stitch into a Rockstar Stitch and it's got two left. That means we can Teeth and Ambition that. Um, it's also great at poking down your characters for the Rapunzel. Um, it's also great because we run four Prince Eric, so you can sack him, deal two damage, and blow something up. There's just a lot of uh, different tricks you can do with Teeth and Ambitions. And worst case, it becomes ink. We are running three Maui's fish hooks because we are running four Maui's. Uh, even if we weren't running Maui, this card is pretty exceptional. It is a item card and you have two abilities that you can proc from it. By paying two, you can turn one of your characters evasive until your next turn, or you can give a character plus three. So the plus three, I mean, they're both really good for different reasons. Let's say you had Mother Gothel out uh, and it's, let's say it's, you're going into your turn four. Well, and you have Maui's Fish Hook out. You can play a two cost card and then you can tap two to get Mother Gothel evasive. And now she's protected and won't get ran into by some of the little grunts that your opponent may have. Um, another thing is if you have Maui out, you can give him plus three for free. That turns him into a nine, which gets rid of McDuck Manor. It gets rid of it, really any location to that extent. Um, you can give 
also uh, like Minnie Mouse can go up to four, Stitch can go up to six. It just, it gets ridiculous. So the card's very good. We're not seeing a lot of item removal at this time. I think a lot of items are starting to come out to play. So we may see some in the future, but for right now, three sounds good. Minnie Mouse Surfer is a card that we kind of see fall off a tad bit nowadays, but we're running it at two just because in particular matchups, uh, those where the opponent doesn't have a lot of hard removal for your cards, Minnie Mouse is gonna be a great addition there. It also has evasive, and so it could take out certain things that uh, that your opponent may have with the help of our Maui's Fishhook. Um, something else, so you could basically give her four and then take out an opposing Minnie Mouse or, or something else. But um, on the line of evasive, remember that this card does give evasive, so if you are going against a lot of those genies or things like that, you can grant one of your characters evasive to take them out. One of our draw power cards is gonna be Sumerian Talisman. We do run a lot of rushers. We run cards with uh, low health, such as Mother Gothel. And this card, once you crash into your opponent and your card is banished on your turn, you get to draw a card. So this is especially good with Prince Eric. So if you crash Prince Eric, you may end up taking out the threat that you crashed into, plus he kills something, plus you draw a card. So that could be a really nice combo with that. Uh, it makes Maui that much better when he's making that uh, two for one trade that he's so known for. It actually ends up being a three for one because you're drawing off of him. Three copies of Stitch, and you'll notice that you know we're only running six tiny stitches, and that's okay because we do have Perdita to bring them back. So uh, you could actually cut this down to maybe two, uh, but you are driving into your uninkable or your inkables there, so just be careful with that. But uh, again, just uh, rock star fodder. Simba, the bodyguard, is nice because it forces your opponent to uh, make a choice on whether they want to attack into you. It also gives protection to your little people. Um, if they do end up attacking into you, what you can do is uh, then on turn three, you could drop Talisman and you may have uh, like your Stitch one drop out there already or maybe a mini that you can finish them off with if they have three strength or three willpower, I should say. And uh, now you get to at least draw for your Talisman and take out a threat. Uh, oh, also it is recoverable by Perdita. So if you needed that bodyguard in a pinch, you can summon Simba out. For bare necessities, this is our counter to the Sing decks like that Steel likes to run. Um, but most importantly, it's to help get rid of Be Prepared. Not that this deck struggle, struggles extremely with Be Prepared, but if you, it does go, it does tend to go wide, and so this helps you just get that much more value whenever you're activating it. Um, it could also help with Whole New World and uh, things that people, uh, you could take out locations with it, you could take out items with it. It just has a lot of utility, so running four is really great. We run four copies of Pongo because we do run uh, quite a bit of characters in this deck. Um, let's see, the only ones that it wouldn't hit would be four plus six is 10, 13. So we have 13 chances that it could miss, but it's really just there, like you're not totally dependent on that card draw. Uh, Pongo is just a nice little three cost guy that has three attacks. So um, if you need the extra draw, he's there. But if not, it could just be something you swing in and proc Talisman with. Four copies of Hades. So I've tried less Hades and four copies just seems absolutely necessary for this deck. Essentially, your combo with Hades is grabbing things like Rapunzel, um, grabbing things like Perdita back or just cycling the Hades. Uh, grabbing your stitch if you need to shift onto something, grabbing your Maui if you need to take out big threats. There's just so much utility in this. And because we're in a meta where Ruby and Steel cards are all over the place and they're just destroying all of our monsters, being able to grab those things back and replay them is really nice. Not to mention if you needed to in a pinch, you could grab the rush stitch and take out take out a threat that way. Things that I typically like to do is uh, maybe Hades turn uh, five or, or four and start setting up a play for Mother Gothel and, and Rapunzel, finding the missing piece, whichever one you have in your hand, you grab the other one. But picking up Perdita is probably going to be the play that you do every single time. And the reason for this is Hades replaces itself um, and then you grab the Perdita and then Perdita essentially replaces itself um, by playing out one of your small people and then you just kind of cycle that over and over again. 
All right, for Rapunzel, this is our main way to draw. There are tons of ways that this could be procced. Um, you can get the, the two draw off of things like Simba, Minnie Mouse, and Minnie Mouse, or you could get the big three, uh, three draw off of things like Mother Gothel and Maui and Perdita. Now we do have some with two willpower, uh, which is kind of sad, but uh, it's it's not the worst thing. Um, oh, we also have Stitch for the for the uh, three draw as well. So there's lots of targets there, and the fact that you're pulling cards and selecting from your discard pile um, just allows Rapunzel to really shine in this deck. The all star of this deck is going to be Perdita. It doesn't mean you have to mulligan for her, but when you see her come into your hand, and it's right around turns five and six. You should just have so much comfort because this card provides and provides and provides. The name Devoted Mother doesn't even do it justice. She is like the ultimate card in this deck. Um, just an, an awesome card. So you'll be looking to grab things like your Stitch to uh, become more aggressive or to proc the Talisman. You'll be grabbing your Mother Gothel uh, just to set up some big turns where you're questing and trading into something or for your Rapunzel. Uh, you can grab things like Simba to be a bodyguard. You can grab the little stitch to shift onto on the following turn on turn seven. So there's lots of little uh, cheeky things you could do with Perdita. And the thing with Hades is she just keeps coming back. Like you just keep cycling these cards from your discard pile and it becomes pretty crazy. And to round things out is going to be the Rockstar Stitch. Uh, gets a lot of procs from these different cards in here. Let's see, all together we have 7, 10, 17 different targets. And it also works with Perdita. There's a combo there as well. So if you have Stitch out and then you play Perdita on, this, on turn 7 or whichever turn you're playing her, once she summons that thing, then you can tap it with Stitch to draw a card. So it just... The combos just keep coming with this deck. Um, there's probably some more that you could do if you were to sub out some cards here. But that's going to round out the Perdita control deck. Now let's uh, let's jump into some games and see how this works. Ooh, the mirror match. This should be pretty exciting. Okay. So is Stitch a dog? Because if so, we have a lot of dogs in this deck. Just kind of. It's kind of silly. Um, probably gonna have to throw Perdita back. She's just a little too late. Holding on to that ink for so long. Might end up wrecking us. Uh, I'll keep teeth. Mostly as ink. Nice, okay. Well, it also might end up going into our Rapunzel. So, um... a lot of stitches and since we're first I guess we don't really need to play the mini mouse yeah I think we'll probably go into Simba and then we can sing with Simba and then Pongo and then Rapunzel okay you're gonna need to put three out on the board here or Keeping the Maui isn't too bad either. But yeah, we'll get rid of the mini mouse for sure. They have the queen. Uh, we probably just throw our pongo at it. Could also go Maui and then wait a turn. That just seems really slow. I think there's any five or lower cost songs we're too worried about. I mean, if they have the bare necessities, it just ends up trading one for one, which for our teeth isn't that big a deal. Oh, it could take our fish hook too. All right, yeah, we'll probably teeth this. And then I'll actually play out this mother Gothel instead. Um, yeah, I think we could afford to get rid of this. We probably want to keep the Pongo for the draw power. They won't 
be able to clear both of these unless they have like a rusher. That'd be pretty unfortunate. They get teeth. Oh wait, no, they can't teeth. Wait, yes, they can. They can sing teeth, kill the mother Gothel, and then rush into Simba. But I mean, I guess that's fine. It's two for two. No, it's three for two. So that's good for us, I guess. If they end up doing that, we'll just pongo. If not, I think we'll end up inking this stitch. I know we're heading to the top of the curve here, but like the draw from Pongo is just going to help propel us a little bit. Okay, so potentially a Mufasa deck here. What is it on five they could throw at us? Maybe Maui? I should respect the Maui threat and just not quest with Gothel. Alright, so yeah, we'll go with Stitch. Since we have another Rapunzel, yeah, we're probably definitely not going to quest here. We do have Fish Hook now for Evasive for the Maui counter. And then holding Sumerian Talisman in hand is pretty good. So if they do have something big and juicy we want to crash into, just throw that down, trade with it, and it'll be a plus one for us. We'd like to get our own Maui though, so we can start procking this fish hook for free. Um, having the other Rapunzel is nice though, especially when we have a Rapunzel out already. So it's a pretty good chance we can get another uh, three drop off of it. But I might actually just crash it here into this dock and just draw two. That's also pretty good. I mean, two or three, you can't complain with that. Kind of doing it for us here. The other play is just crashing and getting the talisman out, but we don't really have a good two cost, so I'll really just do this. What are the odds? What are the odds? Okay, that's a really good draw for us. Since we already have a Simba in the discard for Perdido, we can go ahead and just get rid of this Simba. Now we've gotten rid of two, uh, what's it called? Okay, so if we do this, then we can pump the stitch for, and then trade with the Maui, I guess. So we'll go ahead and start getting some lore on the board. Um, yeah, our hand's looking pretty juicy though. I mean, we have the Hades if they kill the Rapunzel. Uh, then we can Rapunzel our Maui in a little bit. Surprise, he's questing. It's to each their own. Alright, I think here we will... Could get the Maui out. Yeah, maybe we'll do that just so we can have the fish, fish hook ready. Actually, just gonna ink this Pongo. So if we can get to eight ink, then we could play Hades into Rapunzel, which is pretty nice. And we have the Talisman for draw anyway. I think we've got this one in the bag. Okay, 
might be a be prepared. I'll just get these items into play here. So just be kind of a preparation turn in case they be prepared. And we have the Hades to grab back whatever and we can cycle the Hades if we need to. is kind of built around countering be prepared so it's unfortunate that they don't have any extra gas in the tank um yeah, i guess we just grab the rapunzel for the card draw later just get another little dude out good to have these stitches in the discard though for perdita um, that way you can pull them out and then Hit them with rush. Oh, a Donald Duck. Oh, that's pretty cool. I've always wanted to make this card work, but never found a solution for it. We'll just grab the bodyguard. Uh, no, we'll grab Mother Gothel for the draw. Stitch and then be questing for like four. It's pretty intense. Oh. What a draw. Well, you can choose move up to three damage. Oh, that's really cool. I didn't realize you could do that. I thought it was always just maximum amount. Huh. GG to my opponent. I definitely enjoy the uh, use of this Donald Duck. Hopefully you're able to make it work in the future. Okay, sweet. Amber, Amethyst. Such a cool pairing. And the colors are just beautiful together. All right. Um, Teeth and Simba's pretty decent. Smearing Talisman is probably good to hang on to. So maybe we'll hold Gothel, Talisman, and probably the Simba for ink. And then we'll hope we can get some low cost cards. That we did. Also kind of tempted to drop two of these Talismans. If you can get two down and they don't do anything about them, you're in a pretty great spot. Think of what we ink here. Okay, opponent's playing aggro, so we'll just keep the stitch. And I doubt they're playing any songs and things, so go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll just fill up our board with characters. This is not great for the Mother Gothel, um, seeing as most of their characters have one or two attack. But uh, good for the Simba, though. And I mean, decent with Sumerian Talisman, because we end up getting a plus one each time. Kita. Might be threatening the big Kita next turn, so they might hold off on questing with the Maleficent, which they do. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of... Well, actually, Mother Gothel is pretty decent for the big Kita on the following turn. We have a lot of them, so... I think we'll do... This seems pretty decent. This 
this way, if they trade with the Simba, with Kida, uh, I guess they can't because if she goes to zero. But uh, this will put Simba and Stitch into kill territory on the following turn, I suppose. If they're playing... Uh, did not think about that card. Oh, what? They didn't go for the trade. Huh. That's pretty odd. Okay, well, there you go. So, I think we'll get the talisman ready here to do that. Yeah, I think. It's okay to move Gothel. Get Talisman out. At least be able to trade our Stitch there. We could throw another Stitch out next turn. Yeah, I was I completely forgot about the amount of men package here. But not quite sure why they didn't trade into the Simba. I guess they're wanting to just go questing with all of these and have us deal with it. So if they don't swing, then... Okay, then we're just gonna play Talos... Oh no, we can't play Talisman. So we have to take this one out of the stitch. Okay. Probably should have drawn first, but hey, here we are. Um, we'll be on five next turn, so... Kind of fine doing this. Just try to keep up with the lore questing. You're playing a Rockstar deck uh, against aggro feels pretty good because we have so many low cost cards that we can uh, get a lot of really good value two for ones with all these characters. Nice. So yeah, it's good we didn't reveal the stitch quite yet. So be able to take out some of these threats. Not sure about the value right now. I'm actually gonna draw some cards here. We don't have any way of popping them, so I want to look for T-Pin Ambitions. That's pretty good, too. Grab another Stitch with Hades if we need to. But something tells me we need to start questing out with this Stitch. Because they might run away with this. Drawing with the Pongo is not great because we're looking for Teeth and Ambition, and unfortunately, he can't draw that. He sends it to the bottom, I believe. Yeah, so that'd be pretty horrible. All right, so we'll continue drawing, I think. Good for us. We play Stitch and Mother Gothel here. Card. And then we have her available for next turn. Uh, the Rapunzel, that is. I kind of have to just keep questing and putting the pressure back on my opponent, have them start dealing with our board. As much as it would be nice to just trade into that Merlin, if he wants to kill the Stitch, then 
that's one less lore that they have and one more lore that we gained. Yeah, teeth would be fantastic now. I have another Pinocchio. That would spell some big doom for us. Teeth. No teeth. We'd go for the teeth by crashing this, but oh, actually, we could crash this stitch. It's pretty good. Oh no! <laughs> My brain went on auto draw mode. All right. Um. Well, we know we're doing this. Let's see. They go to seven. They can't. Oh, they could bounce goat and win there. But so that isn't out for them. Uh, Cause if they get 17, 18, 19. Oh, never mind. Yeah, we just got to take out this Merlin. that Almost. and go with the mini oh yeah I probably should have did this okay man that sequence was just totally jacked I uh, should have drew before I attacked in just in case we could sing uh, teeth with mother gothel but Hey, here we are. <clears throat> so we have lethal on board. Opponent can get to 17, 18, 19 with a goat bounce here. Just not enough, unfortunately. Unless they have some secret weapons. Okay, cool. Whew. Always a scary deck to play against. Right, we'll close this out with a double stitch. Fun to note, uh, and why I love this deck, well, one of many reasons why I love this deck is the uh, rush stitch is also a target for your rock star. So uh, you can always shift onto that card. That's a fun little combo there. All right, let's keep it going. All right, we have a amber, Sapphire deck. So go wide or go home, I guess. Which our deck does go wide sometimes. Okay, so we have uh, one, two, don't need two of those. Uh, Talisman might be decent. Bare Necessities might be decent. That's Eric, I'm not too sure. I think we'll go for the ink here. Hold on to these. First, so mouse seems to be freaking out. So throw this and the stitch. This will start to give us some options to trade Sumerian, like trade in with a character and have Sumerian talisman proc. Which they will be able to grab next turn if they so desire. Queen. Yeah, again, having two of these out is pretty nice. I don't think they have a great way to remove Minnie Mouse, so keeping that is pretty good too. I think what we'll do is just play this upright and wait and see what they come up with. Because if they play the big queen, then we could trade both of these. That'll okay. They're ramping. Okay, so we could trade both of these, which will lead us into a plus two, I believe. Uh, 
not sure if I should care about what else is in their hand. I mean, they could have McDuck Manor, which we have the Maui for, so I guess we don't really care about that. Um, yeah, I'll just crash these, I think. Puts two cards in our discard for Perdita, which is nice. have a talisman out and unless they have Judy I don't think they have a great way to deal with it let's play over there um we'll do the Prince Eric yeah maybe we'll go with Prince Eric here Although I think Prince Eric, yeah, he has to be banished, so if they end up playing Hades here, that would be kind of unfortunate. Opponent whiffs the bear. So got a discard out of their hand. I don't even think they took time to even care about what's in our hand. <laughs> Draw some cards, which is nice. You opt to throw out the Pluto. So we'll go Maui and so Pluto here. Sorry, Maui into Simba and then Eric into Pluto. Grab some value. So they can't Hades this turn, which is nice. And we have Perdita into either one of these. Uh, Rothal at the top would be pretty good as well. Two for one, that's all we can ask for. We go for the Perdita. Um, they do have Hades next turn. This just dies to Hades, fortunately. Uh, I think we'll be okay with this, actually. Grab the Simba. Protect our Eric. Now we have a couple plays here. If they don't get rid of the Perdita, we can crash it into Grandma and then draw three. Okay, nice. <clears throat> then we can crash uh, Eric into Tala. Kill the Rep I mean, it's pretty weak, but we do end up drawing a card off Smear and Talisman. And then we'll draw three off of Rapunzel, so it's pretty good. So, I don't have any rushers we can grab with Perdita. Is pretty nice. Keeps our Prince Eric here. Um, their biggest threat is, I feel like it hasn't come out yet, so maybe we just do this play here. So I'd rather maybe save the Maui for like uh, Hades. Draw a card, and we will kill the Rapunzel. 
And opponent concedes. Cool. Steel Song. All right. This one is going to be pretty crazy. Um, let me just keep one Gothel. Man, I wish we were going first. This is going to be rough. Bear Necessities. I think our bare necessities are going to be pretty decent here. If they play Cinderella, we'll just... Uh, I guess they got Stitch. So maybe we play Protective Cub. Um, don't have really any draw power outside of Pongo right now, so this is kind of it's kind of icky. No teeth, so don't really care about that card. Nice. Okay, keeping them up. So we'll do a Gothel. They could shoot this down, which maybe is not the worst thing. So if they play something, they could play... Aerial. Two aerials. Okay, we'll go ahead and grab... Oh man, they didn't hit anything. Let's go check out what's in their hand. <laughs> Punzel and Stitch. All right. Do you have the Rapunzel, which is annoying. Um, so how can we counter that? Hmm. It's gonna be able to hit with Ariel, regain those goodies. Um. They might draw into some other things. So I guess we'll just get out this surfer. Maybe the Pongo is better because it would have curved out nicer, but I'm just afraid that whatever they draw for Rapunzel, you know, it's better chance that that thing will have a power to kill two things than one thing. And we also don't know what's in their hand. Play not any songs. Alright, so I think we're going to go ahead and take out the Ariel. And we'll play out the... Hmm. Awful, I guess. cards that's right okay lantern nice food all right let's snag that rapunzel shall we be able to get three for one Um, probably keep this Gothel up in case they hold new world and we can get a Rapunzel going. Soups, bueno. Next 
Star for Rockstar. Some more opportunities to hit. Okay. It's the big Robin Hood. It's nothing. Interesting. So we're just going to see what they got. Oh, two whole new worlds. You don't want to play those? <laughs> Taking one of them. That's a really good top deck. Does he sing? Trades. Bad. That's what, <laughs> that's why you hold your mother gothel, folks. That is why you don't get greedy in this game. They could... Actually, we're gonna go ahead and kill that. Oh, Mother Gothel. You're so good to us. And we went. Cool. Take it down. A Amber Steel deck, just like that. We didn't go very controlly here. We just kind of gassed out our opponent. Um, looks like they didn't draw too well. They didn't have any high-end cards. A bunch of small stuff. They, uh... I mean, they inked their rock star and got kind of stuck with those two whole new worlds. Um, yeah, pretty unfortunate for them, but good for us. So uh, hopefully that was a good enough showcase of this deck and all the things that it has to offer. I think Perdita Control is probably my favorite deck that I've ever built. It just has so many fun combos in it. Uh, it's got the ability to recover from things like uh, board wipes and uh, I'd say probably hand destruction is one of the things that it struggles with, especially if that hand destruction comes in early. You just want to make sure you're setting up your, your talismans and things like that so that you have a little bit of uh, bounce back from that. But uh, that's going to be it for us. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, stay wild.